Moving forward to forward is the motto of this year's State of the City Address. Our City Council, after months of study and negotiations, has passed a balanced budget. It turns what could have been a cautionary tale in a handful of years into a vision for fiscal sustainability and organizational values. For the first time, we have allocated general fund money for infrastructure improvements. Our public works department is working hard to rehabilitate and improve miles of roads and streets after decades of neglect. Moreover, our city will be hiring in earnest in all departments, filling vacancies promptly, including those at this library. We will be enhancing services to our residents and restore appropriate accountability accordingly. Our congressional representative, Ms. Young Kim, called me last week to personally congratulate our city on receiving a $5 million earmark for homeless outreach and proactive engagement. That is the Hope Center uh, that will be online soon, which will provide wraparound services for the unhoused in our community. As a member of the board of directors of the Orange County Housing Finance Trust, the arm that awards low income housing grants in this county, Unlike Los Angeles, I can assure you, homelessness is a problem we can solve in real time in our city and in our county as a whole. Our police chief, Robert Dunn, is set to chair the North Orange County Public Safety Collaborative. I can tell you today, leadership matters. It certainly matters on regional boards. And to have our city represented by Mayor Pro Tem Whitaker in leadership roles on these re regional boards, and now our police chief as well, it marks a new approach for our city in making certain that our interests are fully represented in regional decision-making. Finally, our city council and our staff have purposely moved forward with certain projects in our city because while there are difficulties in our city's two largest employers being nonprofits, this is a positive summoning our city and our staff to be innovative and courageous in its forward thinking and resolve. New developments like the nearly five acre project called Streetlights at Lemon and Orange Thorpe will add over 300 new residential units. The new affordable housing project on Commonwealth will finally move forward an additional 50 or more units to our housing stock. There is excitement over a new 70 unit studio and single bedroom project on Santa Fe that'll provide more affordability to our city. The Hub Center project next to Cal State Fullerton will provide more student housing if necessary, and the Sunrise Village proposed project may enhance a corner of a city that's been neglected for decades. New businesses like the Goodman Logistics Center, a 1.5 million square foot logistic campus on 65 acres, will provide local jobs, provide new revenue streams, and become the center of North Orange County supply chain arm. Proposed businesses like the Hispanic market at the old CVS property on Euclid will also provide diversity to our local shopping choices and become a gathering space for our residents who appreciate Latin food and culture. Fullerton is poised to become a leader in conservation, Southern California with West Coyote Hills preserved for generations to come. I want to thank our elected officials who make bringing money home a priority. So thank yous are in order to Assemblywoman Sharon Quirk Silva and my dear friend, Senator Josh Newman. Noresco has been hired to make sure that we have energy efficiency in our city and along with that energy savings as well. The Orange County Power Authority will increase sustainability for generations to come and consumer choice as well. And as a director on the Metropolitan Water District, I was proud to hire our new general manager, General Manager Padel Hashkalil, who I consider both a friend and is my neighbor. So Fullerton is poised to be the center of water and resiliency in Southern California. Having the general manager in this city, a Met director as well, 
another MET director that calls Fullerton home, and many of the Metropolitan Water District employees that value Fullerton and have called it home for years. We will be at the leadership role on the board, at the table, in the room to make sure that we as Fullerton residents are at the forefront of not only conservation, but water resiliency as well, as water is life. I look forward to our city participating in the Wayland Foundation's conservation challenges in April. It is a mayor's challenge and I have uh, taken that challenge. So I encourage all of those in our community to participate as we move forward. Fullerton is moving forward and I am honored to be a part of its newfound progress. I thank everybody for their time and I'm here to answer questions and uh, press palms and hear complaints if necessary. Thank you very much, everyone. Um, do you want to just go ahead and raise your hand for any questions? Sure. Yes. Will the council uh, put on the agenda the restoring of our sidewalk facilities over? Sorry, would you mind repeating the question for the I certainly will. This is a question in regards to the Florentine sidewalk. I believe it's uh, affectionately known as the Florentine bump out. Uh, we look forward to restoring uh, public property back to the public. Uh, anything that was a unjust uh, conception, ill-advised or other, uh, time allows us to look at it a second time, perhaps a third. So if that's necessary, I can assure you, we as a council will do that. Next question, please. Thank you, Ms. Kaluzny, right? It's hard to see, there's a gigantic light in my face. <laughs> but uh, nevertheless, thank you for the question. Anything else, or anyone else, please? Feel free, don't be shy. Yes. I'd like to learn more about the affordable housing that you mentioned, who might qualify. I know we've had a hard time attracting police with having competitive salaries. I know our teachers struggle to afford housing. What would it do for those who have good incomes but um, can't still can't afford housing here in Fullerton? Sure. So affordable housing was the question and, and how we can move forward with it. There are uh, elements in the city that would like us to remain in 1950, I suppose. And the folks that are, that are interested in doing that provide value for our city. They want uh, quality of life to be maintained. And that's a voice that we hear and should be valued. However, I think we all have to be very honest with ourselves and recognize that living in Southern California has become not only difficult, but a near impossibility for most of the younger generation that's coming. Uh, it is of great sorrow to me personally that at 23, my son could not live in Fullerton. And when in 23, I could. I think rent for my home at the time that I shared with my parents was $1,500 for a home and it was three bedrooms. I can't conceive that now. It'd be north of 35. So I think we have a fiduciary duty as adults to try and find uh, ways forward, a uh, path forward. And one of the easiest ways to do that is to build more housing stock at all levels, but in particularly at the uh, mid to low. So I am really encouraged by the progress that's being made on the Commonwealth property. That was delayed for many years and debated for many years. Um, and I think we're gonna get a great project as a result. You know, I don't get defeated by the notion of delays. Oftentimes it allows us to rethink, reimagine what projects could be and perhaps give a, a better product for the uh, folks in our community in the long run. Um, so I, I look forward to these things all happening. I think more uh, studio apartments, more one bedroom are necessary in our community. I think that's happening. So I, I encourage uh, developers to come forth, uh, folks that uh, are 
actively engaged in the low income housing uh, projects in Orange County to find a space in Fullerton. Uh, both Supervisor Chafee, uh, his wife is here today, hello Paulette, and I serve on this board of the Orange County Housing Finance Trust. And we would like nothing more than to award a good project here in Fullerton. So please come forth with one as in the two year existence of this uh, housing trust, none has come forth in this city yet. So I look forward to that and uh, I encourage that vocally uh, today and every day. Thank you for the question. Any other questions, folks? Please don't be shy. I'm here. Yes. Do you have an update on the use um, or the transition of the fire department and what that looks like and if that's coming? That's a great question. So uh, the question was about uh, our fire department and perhaps uh, moving over to the Orange County Fire Authority. So last year, uh, the city council and I uh, made sure that the uh, negotiations with our labor arm of the fire department, uh, their contract was up. They said that we, they'd keep it status quo if we took a bid because everybody wonders what could be, but you never know until you actually get the data points and the numbers for it. So this is something that we all agreed to, uh, and in good faith, we are moving forward. Now, the proposal was given to us in late last year. It has now um, been made public, so all of you have access to that. But that is a one-sided proposal from the Orange County Fire Authority, and it requires our due diligence to look and look at the numbers from our end, uh, what our unfunded pension liability would be, what our capital improvement costs would be for all of the stations that we have. And all of these things have to be in great consideration before we move forward on effectively losing 30% of our budget uh, in terms of our uh, negotiating um, capacity for it, if that makes sense. So we're doing it very deliberately but we should have answers for you uh, late summer, early fall. Any other questions, folks? One came in through the chat. Says Fulton needs to exceed this market rate housing, RHNA, but not affordable housing. What can Fulton do differently to meet the affordable housing needs in the housing? Build more affordable housing. It's just simple. It's not a complicated algorithm. If we want more affordable housing, we have to build more. Um, and we have to be attractive as a city for developers that specialize in that, because not all developers do that. It's not in their wheelhouse. Uh, it's, it's very much, if I can use a football vernacular, it'd be like a position coach. You know, playing linebacker is a lot different than wide receiver. It requires a different skill set, and those developers have that skill set. So, at, uh, you know, I'm in open uh, arms, welcoming uh, them back to Fullerton recognizing that we have a council that understands our needs and can move forward accordingly with that. Great question. Next one. Yes, sir. Um, Fred, you mentioned early on some of these are some of the existing plans that are in motion. Could you could you repeat what they were? So you mentioned the Commonwealth property. Is that the, is that the city Commonwealth property? It is. Uh, and what's currently going on? What, what's we've, we've got a uh, exclusive negotiation agreement uh, that the city entered into with a, uh, a provider of that uh, that specializes in that marketplace. And I look forward to receiving uh, uh, the next uh, path forward on that. They had six months, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, but, uh, or just something like that, maybe it was 12 months. Uh, all of these months are becoming one, so you have to forgive me if I'm wrong. Did you mention like two or three other properties too? There was one on Santa Fe and there Yes, there is a uh, proposed, uh, project on Santa Fe that it consists of solely uh, one bedroom and studio apartments, which this city sorely needs. Uh, and you know, if you look at where uh, the, the dearth of our you know, housing is going to be, it's going to be required for those that are on the margins. So folks that are entering the workforce for the first time very early on, students that are leaving college, uh, families, uh, that require a space to be housed. These studio and single uh, uh, bedroom uh, 
units, you know, give us a great opportunity to really uh, examine uh, where our city needs to be as a whole on that. And I look forward to making sure that when those units are online, that I think overall it will lower housing costs. Uh, and uh, that's where we got to be, folks. And I, I think we all have to recognize that and come to an awareness that uh, there were a million Californians leaving California in the last handful of years. And they're not leaving because they don't like the politics, so well, perhaps. <laughs> um, by and large, those that are leaving are, are leaving for uh, better opportunities elsewhere because the cost of living here is so high. So if we're going to stop the exodus, uh, we need to do so in a meaningful way. Thank you for the question. Anyone else? Yes, uh, yes. Mayor John. You should see me around my kids. They ask me a million <laughs> questions. Yes. I want to know what you're most excited about. That's a great question as well. Uh, I, I'm most excited, and this is going to sound silly because I, I was part and parcel in creating the problem. And I'm first to admit that. Uh, creating a atmosphere of stability in Fullerton is critical for me. It's what I'm most excited about. So I am excited to announce to you that we have hired a city manager and come to an agreement with him. Um, this uh, will finally after a full year, I think bring much needed stability, not only to the buildings, the employees that work within them on behalf of our residents, our council and our residents as well. Uh, stability is critical to be able to move forward. You just can't do it when the boat's rocking so hard. So the fact that this is getting done, we are gonna be hiring in earnest for a lot of these vacant positions. Uh, I think Fuller can, can look forward to us coming out of this pandemic uh, in a tear to get better, uh, and we will. So that's what I'm looking forward to the, the most. And again, I take full blame for partially creating that, if not all of it. Uh, that's uh, my fault, my fault alone, I suppose. Next question, folks. I have a question. Yes. Um, you here have at your disposal amazing leaders in their organizations and their communities, sub communities within Fullerton. We are together every month. Our board alone is such a huge resource. How can the Fullerton Collaborative support you and the city council and this new city manager in being the most effective together to make what happen? What you're saying is getting us more stable. That's a, that's a wonderful question. So with anything uh, that's good requires two things. They start with the letter C, communication and collaboration. So what I would encourage all of you to do uh, in our community, and I've, I've, I've encouraged it for a good long time while I've been on council, is to communicate with your council members, uh, communicate with the city manager, utilize me. Uh, I will make every effort to afford my time and my resources to you, your cause, uh, your concerns. You should not feel as though you are on an island. You are not. You shouldn't feel as though you are alone. You are not. Uh, I will make certain personally uh, that I spend every waking moment of my time on council uh, listening. I may not do as you ask. We may not always agree. And if you ask me what my thoughts are, I will give them to you in real time. But that said, it's far better to do that than this meandering discourse online that some folks are consistently participating in of rumor, innuendo, and nonsense. That's not real. It doesn't get anything done. All it does is scare folks, delay the process, and make sure that the vacuum is filled with bad actors. So I encourage all of you that have anything that's a concern to you. If it's a concern to you, it should be and is a concern of mine. Now that said, doesn't mean I'm gonna agree with you, but at the very least you hear me and I hear you. 
And I think that's really important as we move forward, that we collaborate and communicate with one another. So thank you. Great question, by the way. Thank you. Anyone else? Aaron, no one came in through the chat. Yes, sir. I'm behind it says, this is from Jane Rands. This is the first time for Fullerton redistricting and the majority of the people who have participated in the process feel their proposed map has not, has not had fair consideration sure. by the redistricting advisory commission. It's a long one. And the council this far. There's one more public hearing on March 29th. In hindsight, do you feel it would have been better for council to have informed or formed an independent redistricting commission rather than an advisory commission? Hey, you can look at anything in Monday morning quarterback it, I suppose. Um, the one thing about an independent redistricting commission that I was opposed to was just because it's independent doesn't necessarily mean the commissioners are. Does that make sense to everybody? That everybody has an agenda, whether it's political or otherwise. So what is to say that that independent commission would have done something better, more equitable than the commission that uh, selected a map now? You know, the, the, the thing that I hope everybody recognizes with regards to map uh, 114, I suppose, is the one that we were discussing on, on Tuesday. You know, I, I, I lived for a year and a half on Associated Road, right next to the 57 freeway. Uh, I was uh, struggling financially. I just had a newborn son. And living in this apartment, I had one lamp. Um, in fact, my mother-in-law had to buy me all of my uh, pots and pans because we had one walk. Uh, and, and I'd walk around in the evening with this one lamp, unplug it after we ate dinner into the bedroom to put my son to sleep. And then in our bedroom where we had an air mattress uh, that we pumped up. And by the way, they're terrible when you sleep on them, by the time you wake up in the morning, you're sleeping on the ground. So it, it, it occurred to me better to sleep on the ground, which we ended up doing. But I can tell you by that lived experience that I had nothing living in those apartments in common with folks that lived in multi-million dollar homes on Skyline Drive. So the notion that that would be part of one district with one representative was offensive to me because I, I lived that life. You know, I, I lived with one uh, garage for a car, the second one that my wife needed. They, we had to pay for it, which we couldn't afford. So parking was a quarter of a mile away. And if you have a child and groceries, that's not a walk that's pleasant. So, you know, I, I hope folks recognize that this is an imperfect process. It's still part of the process now. 114 isn't the map that will be uh, you know, biblical form at this point, there's still another hearing and I encourage everybody to participate just as I encouraged on Tuesday that if you don't like 114 as a map, please submit another uh, of your own uh, the, and, and we'll consider it at the end of the month. Thank you very much for that question. Great question, Jane. Anyone else? Yes. That's a great question as well. So uh, without getting too uh, in the weeds with this, I'll, I'll, I'll give you an idea of how the sausage was made. So I, I serve on a regional board with a uh, local city council member, and he had asked me to make an introduction to uh, Miss Ellen Ballard. So as a uh, courtesy to her, which was important to me, I contacted her personally and asked her if that in introduction could be made. If not, I was happy to do some sort of PowerPoint presentation, just introducing uh, the service to our council. Ms. Ballard had recommended that it go through her uh, board, and that was that. And that turned into privatizing the library. I'm not sure how. And if folks would have asked me directly, um, about what, what is the could have been or the should have been, I would have let them know. But I, I found it puzzling, disheartening in some way, that we had just funded the passport office of uh, the library to be open. We had talked about as a council universally to uh, hire more 
uh, the vacancies in the library, of which our city manager told us at the time to hold off because they hadn't hired anybody yet. Um, and that turned into privatizing the library, which is unfortunate. So, but again, uh, communication, collaboration, folks, this is what I recommend. Great question. Thank you for allowing me the opportunity to clear that up. So you had your hand up. Yes. I know that about a year ago, the uh, fortunes of the city were not looking too good and the tax didn't pass that was up there. And judging by your opening statement of the city hiring, I assume that some things have turned around the city. Could you talk a little bit about that? Because I'm a little unclear as where the city's at financially. Sure. So uh, again, without going into more graphic detail and violating some sort of color act uh, from the state. What I can tell you is that hiring basically stopped in our city for the better part of two and a half years. Uh, the former city manager prior to the pandemic wasn't hiring empty positions or positions that have been vacated. And by the way, just so everybody recognizes, I think I could just say the obvious and we'd all agree. No matter how good a business is, or a agency is, or a nonprofit is, uh, jobs are transitional in nature. Folks leave for whatever the reason. They move, uh, choose to employ themselves elsewhere, find something better, move up the chain, uh, et cetera, et cetera. But when you as a city don't hire anybody before the pandemic, then the pandemic hits. So at that point, nobody's hiring anyone. Because one, it's not fiscally very sound. And two, it's almost impossible to do when we're on lockdown and wondering what's next and questioning whether or not, you know, anything is appropriate. So that takes us into last year. We have a city manager change again. I take uh, responsibility for that. And we have a bunch of interim city managers, too, in total sense. And they're not hiring anybody because they're interim entitled. And they don't want to hire anyone until an actual city manager is hired, which we've now done. So now we are in a, uh, to the point where I think we're going to put a, a help wanted sign on the outside of city hall <laughs> and uh, encourage everyone in our community that uh, if you'd like to serve, uh, serve our city, uh, please come out and do so. So it's not a matter of just the better financial outlook. It's a matter of the fact that these are positions that were budgeted and never filled. So uh, I, I hope that that looks a little better. Sir, in the hat. Yes. Uh, who owns the library now? The city. Oh, the city. Of course. And it, I hope it remains that way for a very long time. Next question. Thank you for that, though. Yes, sir. Yes, Dr. Shapiro. And one of the reasons why we have not hired some key positions in the city is not because we haven't wanted to, it's because our salaries suck. <laughs> they are lower than any place else in the county and much of Southern California. The same for the police and fire department. That's why we have so many officers leaving and so many firefighters leaving. I've lived in this city for 52 years. I've never seen the morale of those two departments lower than it is right now. All right. So Dr. Shapiro's question was, uh, the salaries are, are terrible. I'll, I'll use that word instead of the word he used. Um, although I'm sure his word is appropriate in that regard. I don't disagree, sir. Our salaries are not on par with the rest of the county or other agencies. And we're basically all competing for the same pool of talent. So how would we get it? That's the that's the question we as a council need to decide. You know, um, being mayor is not king. It's an honorary title. I have one vote amongst five, and we as a council will will see what's best. Uh, I'm glad that uh, we will announce on Tuesday uh, evening that our labor negotiations with our open uh, employees have been concluded and we're stepping forward and hopefully that step forward gets us higher up on the chain of equitable pay but uh, that's a constant struggle that we have sir 
we are all competing for the same talent. And there are, so you have an idea, Dr. Shapiro. You talked about our fire department and our beloved police department. There aren't a lot of applicants for those departments. It's just not something that's on the radar of this generation, for whatever the reason is. And I think we all have to figure out and reprioritize what's important in our community. What are the things that are going to uh, sustain and uh, develop uh, its worth uh, to our citizens? So, I, I, you know, I don't disagree. Your point's well taken and well made, sir. You had a follow up. Go ahead, sir. Yeah, I, I would disagree with that. I think at least as far as the fire department's concerned, there are loads of people who would love those jobs. They just don't find policing and traffic as anything more than a training department because our salaries are so low compared to every other department in the county and in Southern California. Well, Dr. Shapiro, you're, you're making an argument to somebody who agrees with you. Um, they are low. The question is, how do we make them higher? And how do we do it in a fiscal sustainably manner or sustainable manner? In terms of your assertion that they don't want to be here, I don't know you can make that assertion, sir. I think that's a little bit hyperbole. I would disagree with you on that because if you look at the fire academies of not only Fullerton and the Orange County Fire Authority, they're far lower than where they used to be. So I, I, I want you to think about that, sir. Uh, I don't disagree with you on the salary portion. I disagree with you that loads are waiting and banging on the door to be a firefighter. I think, I think this generational priority is a little bit different than uh, generations in the past, sir. Yes, sir. Go ahead. So we'll be on our last question also. Okay. Uh, I, I'd like to announce that the Fullerton uh, Corporation Board can do issuance because I'm a stockbroker. I don't see why you can't do issuance and raise like a million dollars or ten million dollars. Okay. See why you can do that. that that's a, a great question. So Fullerton is not a corporation. Uh, that's first and foremost that I have but to. Isn't, isn't the library incorporated? Well, the city's incorporated, sir. But oh, we're, we're not we're not run as a city. You know, we're a city, not a corporation. So. Uh, and, I, and I understand where you're coming from. There are some things that we can do, uh, like bonds that we can issue out that are basically kind of, I, I understand your, 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 your question. Uh, where you want to try and avoid things like that is everything is effectively pushing the can down the road. So I may be fine as a 50 year old man to say, well, you know what? I'm not going to live in 50 years, so let's do it. But is that fair to my grandchildren? I don't know that that is. So I think, you know, we have to be very diligent, very careful, very deliberate in how we go about uh, making sure that we as a city are fis fiscally sustainable and doing at the same time exactly what Dr. Shapiro had asserted, which is true and making sure that our city is attractive for its staff. Uh, so they stay here and are loyal to our community. Uh, you know, folks, this is a, a wonderful time and opportunity. I would stay here longer, but I, I, I've got a commitment to our city manager to, to meet with him. So uh, I will leave every one of you my business card. Uh, for those in our community that need to contact me, 714-488-8888 is my personal telephone number. So I give it to you now. Please don't uh, call me to just say hello. Thank you. <laughs> Terrible, isn't it? You dropped the mic. All, all <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. That was a very, we appreciate that conversation so much. And um, just to let you know, we did reach out to our other council members and all of them had prior commitments, but they wanted, you know, they did check in with us and were more than happy. I uh, wish that they could have been here, but um, I'm glad that we were able to give you all the time that we had today. So we really appreciate that. Let's thank you one more time with a round of applause. Thank you so much, everybody. So we are now gonna open the meeting to our committee reports, and I am gonna start off with our board report. Um, the executive board, um, we do have Mr. Jay Williams from OC United on our board, and he has 
invited the collaborative to be a, a big part of the Love Fullerton event this year. So Jay uh, did pass these all out to your uh, where you're sitting. These are so you can sign up for a service project. They can they still submit a project? You could submit your own project, and Jay explained this at our meeting last month. And you could also um, sign up to be part of a project. So if you are interested, um, from what Jay has, I have heard him say at least 10 times, they always get enough volunteers for projects requested. So do not hesitate. If you have something in your organization, you know that there's something that needs to be done in one of your neighborhoods, anything you could think of. Look on their website, They're, the projects are very creative and you can see examples. No project is too big or too small. They always get enough volunteers, so please sign up. On, in addition to that, the day of the rally, the, the day of the event starts with a rally in the morning, then all of the volunteers throughout this go disperse throughout the city from nine to noon and work on their service projects and then all of them come back. We are so appreciative of Fullerton College. They are hosting the event this year. And from 12 to 2, the Fullerton Collaborative membership is invited to be a part of their resource fair. So this is kind of taking place of what we would do at Faces of Fullerton. We're still able to have a, um, a place to reach our community. There are already, the people participating in this event are already service oriented. So you are able to get hands on conversations with community members that are already in the headspace to serve. So um, we would love to have you participate. There is no cost to have a booth. The only ask is that you donate 100 kind of snack items for participants. This is a way to lure them to your table <laughs> and get them to start conversations with them. Um, like we're doing legacy dance and we're doing fruit snacks. It could be something very small, very easy and affordable, but that's an also a way to lure them to your table to share um, information. And if you need volunteers, I would highly recommend you have that volunteer information ready to go. Because like I said, you have uh, community members that are in the headspace to volunteer and fired up about just doing it. So um, I pass these around. These are QR codes to a Google Sheet. Um, a Google form to sign up to be a part of that event. I'm the one managing that. So if you have any questions, please let me know. This is gonna be our first big event together as a city and it would just be so great to have as much of our amazing partners there as possible. It will be an outdoor event. It's in the quad at Fullerton College. Okay, so if you have any questions after the meeting, please see me on that and thank you again, Jay and OC United for letting the collaborative participate in such a large way. We really appreciate it. So, Christian, would you like to go next since you're right here? We'll have Christian come up from Hoya Scholars, and he's our co-chair of our next-gen board. Committee, sorry. Thanks so much, Leanna. I'll, I'll be pretty brief. So if you, or someone you know, is the leader of a youth-serving nonprofit organization, Hoy is the next-gen youth empowerment, formerly at-risk youth subcommittee, the place for you. <laughs> it's a bit of a mouthful, we'll work on that. Um, we get together once every two months to share resources, uh, see what's happening in our local organizations, and uh, refer uh, resources to uh, clients that we may not have reached in other corners of our community. And we find ways to collaborate on youth initiatives. This year, one of our big focuses is on youth trafficking. And long term, NextGen hopes to put together a uh, youth council, uh, a youth advisory council, that, that way we can bring together youth from all corners of our community and give them platforms to uh, share what they see for, uh, for their own future in and around this city. So our next meeting is gonna be Tuesday, April 5th at 10 a.m. Uh, we have been virtual for two years, so we're hoping to get back to in-person. Uh, the location is TBD, but if you are on the NextGen email list, uh, and many of you are, then you're gonna be getting an email update with where that location is. If you're not, find me uh, after the meeting, or you can find Bev Berryman too, who is uh, my co-chair for NextGen. We'll be sure to get you on that email list uh, so that we can um, let you know where we're all meeting on Tuesday, April 5th. So we'll see you there. Thank you. Jason, you wanna go next? We have Jason Phillips from Fullerton Act with an update with our Homeless Task Force Subcommittee. People are still homeless. Thanks. <laughs> Such a brat. Uh, 
No, um, some exciting. Um, our, our mayor shared about the Hope Center and it, we've been waiting and waiting and waiting and for that to come on board, which will create more and more opportunities for collaboration and outreach actually have a place where um, a lot of people can be gathered, which is Hope Center up there at um, the YMCA, and then housing. He talked about affordable housing. And so those are kind of the two arms of that. And so I know I've been promising this. We, we have had two meetings, one with our churches and um, one with the community about the Hope Center and uh, Kelly Fritzel from who used to work for the city. Uh, shared about that. So if you're interested, um, please contact me, contact me at Jason, J-S-O-N, at Fullerton, A-C-T, FullertonAct.org. Um, and if you're already on the list from our subcommittee in the past, then you'll be getting those emails. Um, Lisa from Fullerton College already accosted me at the beginning of the meeting, just kidding, uh, <laughs> to talk about. So if you're interested, please let me know. Thanks. And is Train here? Oh, yay! Come on up. This is um, Train Lai. She's um, representing our Early Childhood Subcommittee. So good to see you. Yeah, good to see you. I think this is the first time I've been able to be in person. So exciting to see everyone here. Usually just little squares, you know, so this is, this is uh, different for me. So again, my name is uh, Trang Lai. I work in Fullerton School District and I help to lead the Early Childhood Subcommittee. And uh, I'm excited to let you know that we met, uh, this is not the exciting part, but I'm leading up to it. Our last meeting was on February 28th and our next meeting is gonna be on March 28th and it will be from three to four and it'll still be via Zoom for now. So please take that date down because when you hear all the things that we're doing, I know you wanna be part of it. So March 28th from three to four is our next meeting. And uh, we have three different goals. Our first goal is resilient families and under resilient families, we are partnering with the priority center, the school readiness uh, arm of it. And uh, we are going to be helping them with um, a mental health event on May 21st. And we think that is going to be uh, at Orange Thorpe. So it's a mental health event. And I think that right now they're calling it the self-care Olympics. So we're excited to be doing that and uh, being able to offer it to our community. And the uh, other thing that we will be doing is that we are, we are looking at three different events at three of our schools. And it is called the Family Night, the Reggio Way. And it is for our preschool students. Uh, and they are, the first one's going to be on April 13th at Orange Thorpe. The next one is April 20th at Pacific Drive. The third one is April 27th at Woodcrest. And we will be having different stations uh, for our families to participate in. And the focus is really on developing gross and fine motor skills and giving uh, people, uh, giving our families the opportunity to see how they can develop those uh, skills, the gross and fine motor skills um, uh, with their children. And uh, we are looking forward to the Report, the EDI report, we just, in our, our school district, just did the EDI survey, and we're looking forward to the results that will be coming out in, hopefully in June. So, and that will give us direction on where we want to move next. The second goal area is quality education. And uh, we, we are collaborating with, collaborating with Fullerton College to see if they can offer early childhood education units to our team over in Fullerton School District. And then the next one, the third goal is health and uh, development. And we, are, we have been currently focused on enrolling uh, our, some of our healthcare providers in the OC screening registry. So we're working on that, but, on, but we feel like we can do more. And one of the things that some of our members said was that we have found that not all of our families are, enroll, are having their children participating in early early childhood health care. And so we want to make sure that our families know that the care is available and out there. So we're, we're putting our heads together to see how we can put that word out there. Right, so those are the three areas that we're working on. And we hope that you will be able to join us on March 28th. Thank you. Thank you so much. And I believe Peter is gonna share with us for the health and wellness. 
Hello, everyone. Good afternoon. Can everyone hear me? Can everyone hear me? Yep. Yes. Okay, perfect. So good afternoon, everyone. My name is Peter Hernandez, and I'm here with Providence St. Jude Medical Center's Move More Eat Healthy campaign and reporting on behalf of the Move More Eat Healthy subcommittee. So as you all probably may recall, at the beginning of 2022, as a result of the pandemic, uh, we decided to focus the next quarterly challenge for Move More Eat Healthy, um, really prioritizing our mental health through goal setting and really different ways that we could implement mindfulness activities into our everyday lives. Um, since the beginning of 2022, we've been hosting various different workshops just to really engage with the community both through Zoom and in person. And so um, as you all probably recall from, from the previous meetings, we also uh, incorporated a friendly competition challenge um, amongst, the amongst the Fullerton School District. So I wanted to provide an update as to where we're at with uh, the goals committed with the above and beyond, which if you all may recall, that was the slogan we decided to use, above and beyond Move More Eat Healthy Challenge. So the challenge will actually be concluding at the end of March uh, the 31st. Currently in first place, we have Nicholas Junior High, who has committed a total of 153 goals. In second place, we have Pacific Drive Elementary, um, who has completed a total of 53 goals. And in third place, we have Raymond Elementary, who has completed a total of 36 goals. So, um, so if you didn't hear from your school or there's a school that you all would like to support, uh, please just continue increase, increasing awareness about this challenge. Um, also, uh, just as a reminder, it's open to everyone. It doesn't have to be a student. If mom, dad, uncle, grandma, grandpa, or anyone else is interested in participating in the challenge, they could either use the QR code from our flyer or visit our website at movemoreeathealthy.com. Uh, the school that ends up with the most goals at the end of March will receive a $250 gift card to be used towards physical education equipment. So that's kind of an incentive besides just really prioritizing our mental health and overall well-being, just an additional incentive. And if you still have not made a commitment to the challenge, Move More Eat Healthy will be at the Fullerton School District's block party this Wednesday from at Parks Junior High School from 5 to 7 p.m. For, for anyone that might be interested participating in the challenge in person or registering for the challenge in person. And finally, as a reminder, um, we are planning on having our Move More Eat Healthy subcommittee this Wednesday, March 16th in the morning from 9.30 to 10.30 a.m. via Zoom. So thank you. Does anyone have any questions? Did I freeze? Oh, no. Thank you. Um, so we have a little bit of business we need to take care of real quick. Um, we are voting. We need to vote in a new board member. Um, we do have our, as Debbie inter introduced our board to you today, um, we are always looking for new board members. We always want to make sure we have a really good representation of our membership and of the city. Um, so we are very, very, very fortunate to have Brett Ackerman. He is the director of the Boys and Girls Club in Fullerton, and he is excited about being on the board, but our membership has to vote him in, and now would be the time to do that. So um, if any of you are familiar with Brett and would like to make a motion, it would have to come from our general membership that we would make a motion to vote him into the board a second and then a vote. So I'm opening the floor at that time. I so move. Move second. Move second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? No? Yay, Brett! <laughs> 
he's going to be a great resource for us and he, he's smart and super involved and super in the trenches with our youth and it's going to be a really great presence for our board um also on that note i saw christian running around taking a bunch of pictures um, i just pulled up move more eat healthy on my instagram i was following already so i'm good but i would love it if everybody even if you take a selfie or a picture from across the floor we need uh to get our Fullerton Collaborative social media moving and grooving. And the only way it's gonna get moving and grooving is for you to follow us and uh, tag us in stories and tag us in posts. So um, on Instagram, we're Fullerton Collaborative. We also have a Facebook, but I do know for Instagram is the way, but that will be linked with our Facebook. If you post on Instagram, I did a little story tagged, and then you also have business cards with QR codes to all of that. If, Take it with you and share. We really need your support in marketing our collaborative. There should be no shame in the game of marketing your nonprofits and marketing us all together. This is how we grow, this is how we get grants, and this is how we get funding is by self-promoting. So, and if you tag us, we'll repost tags. So if you if you're doing an event that you think of that's Fullerton Collaborative in that conversation in that world, tag us so we can repost your stuff. So please, 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 if you could do a post today or a story, including us, that would be awesome. Thank you. So, and and subscribe to our YouTube, right? Debbie, subscribe to our YouTube. We need more YouTube subscribers. So any um, help you can give us with that is appreciated very much. Okay, we have three minutes for any announcements. I can walk around with my microphone. Here we go. And I'll move the camera to the computer. Thank you so much and good afternoon. Um, for those of you that haven't seen me on Zoom in the last year, my name is Ricky Bangs. I'm the Executive Director at the Fullerton Family YMCA. It's great to meet all of you in person, finally. It is very awesome. I want to take this opportunity to introduce Stephanie Kristen. She is our mission-based coordinator at YMCA. It's a newly appointed position. It's a novel position. Um, and really what the uh, kind of the impetus for why we started is really to broaden our footprint in the community and so better serve that she's going to be really serving the YMCA uh, and through Mercy Commons Church which does obviously have a big uh, footprint at our YMCA and so she'll be representing the YMCA in a lot of respects and she's already boots on the ground so we're really excited to have her and help, help out with Fullerton Collaborative however possible so awesome. she'll be attending the meetings welcome Stephanie Anybody else? I got one You got one Hi guys, my name is Kevin Moong. I'm with Solidarity, uh, which is a local faith-based nonprofit here in Fullerton in two communities, uh, south of Fullerton. And this Saturday, we're having our Taste of Maple Food Festival, which is a fun little food festival that all the Hmong neighborhood leaders come together and they get to share one of their favorite uh, dishes from their childhood that they grew up making and cooking, and then they share it with the rest of the city. So it's a great chance for you to get some, I think, some of the best authentic Latin American food here in Fullerton. Um, it'll be on Saturday from 11 a.m. till 1 p.m. All of the links are on our website. If you want to go there and buy a food pass, you can get one there. Awesome. That sounds amazing. Okay, back here. Hi, my name is Carla Reyna. I'm a community engagement manager at Unite Us, which is a resource and referral network. Um, but I wanted to share, I heard uh, always looking for monies. So if you haven't heard, um, Orange County or the OC Equity Equity Initiative, make sure you look it up. Uh, United Way is distributing different funds to nonprofit organizations. Uh, so if you haven't looked at it, please go ahead and go on the website and check it out. So uh, OC Equity. Thank you. Anybody else? Here. Hi, everybody. I wanted to let you know about an event happening on May 1st. So if you're not familiar, I'm sure many of you get funding through the Rotary Club of Fullerton. And the Rotary Club is partnering with Fullerton College to do an event on May 1st. The Rolling Stones, Elton John, Johnny Cash are all performing at the Campus Theater at Fullerton College. And by that, I mean they're tribute bands <laughs> and are performing. But they're the best tribute bands out there. And if you want to see them, there's video of them. You can go to either our website, hornetscholars.com, or you can go to the Rotary Club of Fullerton's website, and you'll see a link right from the homepage to see about the event. 
and you can see the videos of them. And our tagline is fake rock stars for real kids. So check it out. Okay, two more and then we'll wrap it up. I think this may have been mentioned earlier. I'm Helene Morris from the Fullerton School District, but we have a community block party on Wednesday. And so I just want to give one more plug for it. It's Wednesday this week at uh, Parks Junior High School. And it begins at five o'clock, goes all the way till seven. And we're going to have student performances. You can give in input on our local control accountability plan or our helicap. And um, it's just, there's food. It's going to be really fun. So we hope to see you out there. Hello everyone, my name is Rosario, I'm an Outreach Assistant at Hope Builders, and I just wanted to invite you all to our construction preview night on April 19th at 5.30 p.m. It'll be at our construction training site, which is in Santa Ana off Poinsettia. Um, it's a great opportunity for people interested in our free career training for our construction program to kind of meet our instructors, meet current trainees, find out a little bit more about our program, and if anyone's interested to actually apply in person. Um, we will also have food and we will be providing a tour of the actual construction site. So hope to see you all there. And if you know anyone interested, you can find us at hope underscore builders to find the link for that. Thank you. Hello everyone, my name is Noemi Gutierrez. I'm representing St. Philip and Nisi right up down the street. And just wanted to give you guys a heads up and in our church, we're using our parish every Friday to do Stations of the Cross in English at 6 p.m. and Spanish 7.15. So you're all welcome. And I'm also the youth minister, which I'm gonna get connected with Christian because I heard that he has great stuff for the next gen. So thank you. Okay, well, this was a fabulous meeting. Thank you so much, everybody, for attending. We will be here together next month, April 11th, I believe it is. Yes, April 11th in this room at 2.30. We start at 2 for networking. And again, like I said, we have this room till 4, so please continue the networking after the meeting. Debbie, did you have any final words before we wrap up? I do not. I just want to invite everybody, once again, Wednesday is our more We are looking for the faith community to be Perfect. Thank you so much, everybody. We hope you have an amazing, amazing week. And if you're in the school system, I believe your spring break is next week, right? Have an amazing spring break next week for our, junior, our grade schools, junior highs, and high schools. Thank you so much.